a lot of times you get proven wrong and sometimes getting proven wrong makes you really really happy one such instance for me has been my entire partnership with a franchise partner yash madwani who is our guest today yash is here to share with us his experience and journey about being a franchise partner at talent corner which is having a franchise opportunity which is india's top 100 franchise opportunities yash thank you so much for joining us hey hi rashesh so friends yash is out here to share his experience he won't be only talking about good things that he has had in this particular franchise journey but he's going to be talking about his past background his highs and lows what he's learned from this business and how actually he's brought success to himself so yash my first question to you is tell us a little bit about yourself prior to becoming a franchise partner of talent corner um so so rashish i basically uh, belong to a business background and my father runs a business so that business uh, thing has always been uh, you know uh, in me uh, of doing it uh, but uh, of course uh, you know having corporate experience of course adds a lot more value uh, to you as a person so uh, i have been a marketing uh, you know guy for almost uh, 10 years of being in the industry and then yeah slowly gradually i realized that uh, it's that ha uh, you know time of uh, life where you need to get on and move on to business and i of course didn't want to be a part of my dad's business and i uh, you know uh, started a restaurant in fact i know it is something very different from what i'm doing right now but um i started i burned my hands and i failed uh, miserably uh, and then of course i had a choice either to go back to the corporate life or again do something uh you know uh that will hold back to me of doing business and i think with that little research um and you know uh getting to know about talent corner uh and then of course uh, once we uh you know had a chat about how your business functions and stuff uh, and yes see that's that's how we are partners today and uh, so that's something that i have done in the past so yeah of course hr is something that i have never been <laughs> ever done that before uh you know taking up talent corner and uh, yeah 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 so i'm happy that i took this decision of uh, being a part of talent corner it's interesting that you mentioned that you've not had any hr background uh, in the past uh, and now that you've been with us for you know more than a couple of years today uh, yeah. do you think it has played a huge impact on the way you've run this business uh so yes it 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 of course has uh, so so for me uh, you know uh, uh, i would use the hindi word uh, you know the jazba of doing any business is always been there so uh, you know uh, when it comes to doing anything now whether it is hr related or it is marketing related or any other uh, you know business uh, so to say or the other business that i run um, you know for me it is about getting into the details of the business and doing it the right way so that there is a win win situation and not just saying because this is not something that i have done so it will be difficult or you know something on those lines so for me it's always that passion that runs me uh, to do or go details uh, you know inside it to be able to excel into that uh, you know uh, you know whatever that you are doing and uh, you know there are lots of people who you know come from very diverse backgrounds Uh, and they are interested to become a franchise and and you know uh, i've had these conversations often where we've got people from an it background to logistics background to people who had actually no experience in the corporate world uh, becoming very successful franchise partners uh, what's your thought process do you believe that someone uh, even from a very different background with no recruitment experience can do this well how easy is it according to you i think uh, you know anybody could do that just like i just said the word jazba or the passion to do any business this is 100% or other 200% doable the only thing that it needs is a, a little bit of patience because uh, it's not a, a you know a magic wand where you just swipe it one side the other side and you have uh, money's coming into your account uh and i and i always tell you know uh, my friends uh, who've been in businesses or who want to move on to businesses that you know nothing in life comes free to you even if you want to do a business you need to work for it right 
and to work for it you need to put in those efforts uh, as any like i i would say that this is like say say i'm a sales agent right to uh, being being able to pitch uh, you know to a candidate or to be selling it to uh, the uh, the the hr uh, or, or the point of contact at the client side plus uh, uh, you know now whether it is logistics or whether it is uh, say any other uh, you know profile i think uh, the key lies in understanding what the client needs by going through of course the client details you trying to understand the profile trying to you know bring out those uh, key elements into it uh giving in your uh, you know of course the first try and i think you know the best part is to research if you are not sure of what this candidate is supposed to be. so research will help you identify keywords and keywords will help you find those candidates and then being able to also help you pitch it to the client saying that are these the terminologies of you know people that you're looking and if you hit that note right and i'm sure uh, you may have a win win or a success uh, uh, you know candidate uh, happening for you there great i think that's a great tip and you know you you also mentioned it beautifully that nothing is magic right there's no magic wand in business uh, it's a lot of hard work and effort and and i think you you only pointed out very beautifully that you may take a franchise but a franchise is nothing but a mere ecosystem which helps you tap into opportunities more easily ultimately it is your hard work and your effort which will determine the way you succeed in this or any other business right and as long as you have the right ecosystem i think it works beautifully well and you know you also so beautifully capsulated the uh, you know the few elements which uh, which can actually get you to do your job better but i know there is a lot more that you've learned from this business and and you have a lot of good practices that you've shared with me uh, I, and it will be difficult for you to cover all of them but if you have to cover these uh, four or five good practices that you think that these are the nail hit in the wall nail kind of good practices what would those be so uh, uh, you know so uh, you know uh, so uh, you know i would like to firstly uh, thank you for putting in so much efforts uh, for you know building this entire franchisee model that you have with certain uh good processes and sops of how you need to do point by point to get there so you know for me i think for any business if you do the basics you will 100% have a win win situation now if you talk to uh, you know uh, coming to me personally of how i have been able to uh, you know uh, you know been able to crack these uh, uh, you know clients that i have been able to so the first things first i would say is to the moment a client is uh, been given to you or allocated to you you need to go to the website thorough understand what does the client do because if you are unable to know what your client do does it's going to be very difficult because you have to ultimately sell this client to your candidate so you need to have a thorough understanding of that once you have that then as a process that we call the client to understand the needs requirements budget criteria etc try and ask as many questions to the client like you know whether it is work from home work from office because in today's time this is the most important and the critical uh, you know question that we need to ask because candidates are like asking is it work from home or whatever so uh, in, in timings uh, what is the employee size how old is the organization these are basic checklists that we need to go through to be able to ask the client so that you have full clarity when you are talking to the candidate now when you have this information and when you are talking to the client uh, as in the candidate sorry the second important aspect is to give maximum information to the candidate available like do not try and hide anything you know uh, from the uh, from the candidate and you may also you know certain times face situations where uh, the candidate uh, say for an example is at a 4 lakh ctc and he is expecting a 8 lakh ctc now you as a person also know that it is 100% that the person is asking you for and in the industry standards like a 20 to 30% is what we've been seeing and of course it in today's time is at a next level but you also need to make the candidate realize that hey you are asking too much but your skill sets at the end will be decided by the client to be able to see if that can be matched or you will get so prepare him mentally that we are not taking that expectation in mind we will take you but uh, sub- subject to client terms and conditions and your interview 
you process this then uh you know in 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 the first so say when the you, you know the client is allocated you have done this information to the candidate do not this is again my opinion do not try in the first round of cvs give like 7 8 10 cvs to the client what i personally do is i try to give anywhere between 3 to 5 cvs to the client so that at least when the client gives me a feedback say if he tells tells me that out of 5 years three are good two are not as per the expected expectation at least i know that three are right and then the next round of cvs are as per those three people that we have found because if you land up giving 10 8 cvs and they reject it in the first go you will be surely dejected and you will feel that pinch that you know i invested so much time but the client just rejected in 2 minutes so try to you know focus and uh, you know get what the client needs and get it right in the first round and subsequently i'm sure within 2 to 3 rounds of your cvs you will 100% see a closure now uh, you know uh, again uh, you know uh, when 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 the client gives you a feedback that uh, as i gave an example three two are rejected ask ask them in detail why the two are rejected what is that point that is missing in that person is it a criteria is it a you know in any other uh, technical aspect that is missing in this person to be able to ensure that at least in your next round of cvs even that is taken care of so your round 2 is much more perfect than your round 1 right and uh, the other thing that i you know take care of is like being in touch with the client and candidate and trying to follow rigorously with these people okay that's again a key uh, don't piss off somebody uh, respect their time but try to be in touch okay then uh, you know uh, some of us i am assuming would be doing this where we would call uh, the candidate have all the information with us and we would happily just download the resume from either of the portals avoid doing it in fact ask the candidate that this is what i am sharing with you please share your you know updated resume uh, resume with me this will also give you an intent of the candidate that he is he or she is genuinely interested in this company because sometimes we do it we give it to the client and then we realize that the client says oh this guy is selected and then when we call we are just chasing them and they are probably not answering phones for whatever reasons right so these are again important things that we need to keep in mind and the the the, the very first thing that you know you should do if you feel that this candidate is not worth your client in terms of attitude the you know the kind of conversation that you may have or you know certain times certain candidates say that i want this otherwise i'm not interested certainly try to avoid such people because you will land up uh, not having a conversion because they they have a certain you know thought process already in in, in the mind and uh, the other aspect to this is like you know once you know that your client your candidate has been shortlisted after all the rounds and there is an offer that is going to be rolled out try to ask him if you know from your client that say for an example uh, you have uh, uh, the, the the client is willing to offer say a 8 lakh rupee ctc and his expectation was say maybe 8 and a half lakhs negotiable he is currently at say hypothetically 5 and a half or 6 lakh ctc so 30% is roughly about uh, you know 7 uh, 7 and a half lakhs that he is there you try to call him and prepare him that see you are through but in my opinion you might land up getting somewhere around 7 which is still decent enough in today's market however let the client be able to decide so what happens is you have told them less but when he receives an offer he's super happy because he's received 50000 more than what you actually told him or convinced him and believe me that is an acceptance and a conversion for you for sure okay and uh you know respect your clients respect the candidates uh one thing that i have followed uh you know so if if you know the the, the candidate ideally or, or or the you know even client for that matter i would use the terminologies like you know they might speak to you like referring to you as to and you know all that please try to be as polite as possible using up uh and you in english terminologies never try to be uh you know over friendly with anybody as far as it, it is business you know and um you know uh, also uh, again just giving the offer uh, for me that's not an excitement anymore for me only like you know all my clients tell me the same thing nowadays that you know unless the person doesn't join we are not taking this as a as a converted closure 
so uh, be in touch with them uh, because you know sometimes uh, after they resign uh, there might be some uh, things that that they might say that you know maybe the manager is not leaving or they are asking for not 30 days but like a 40 day or uh, you know they have to serve certain notice or complete something before they are actually given a relief uh, the ideal situation is a where a candidate because he also wants a job he might say my 30 days can be negotiable to 20 but when he resigns it is actually 30 days so please ensure that you put in 30 only if he joins in 20 win win but do not try to make it 20 because uh, you know there could be concerns so when you are in touch at least you are able to identify in between only that this is going to be a probable uh, you know problem and please have your backups ready you know and uh, again most important is uh, once the candidate joins it doesn't mean that you know it's over for us yeah, in one month, uh, they will make the payment and uh, Talent Corner will make the payment to us. I think it's more of relationships uh, that we need to develop over the time because you never know one good service to these kind of candidates may somewhere, you know, refer you uh, somebody like saying, uh, so I have a couple of them who've been like, you know, recruited almost one, one and a half year back then they still call me, sir, I have my cousin, I have a friend uh, who's looking, do you have something? So these are actually your potential good referral partners. Now, there could be ideally a same requirement coming in the company and his friend could be somebody he will refer it to you and you get a chance to put that person through you in that company. And, you know, build relations with the clients is the most important. Uh, you know, sometimes we feel that the client does not have, a, you know, a, a requirement at this moment, but try to be in touch because you have to be at the top of their mind. So anytime they have a requirement, they know talent corner is to be contacted first. So, you know, Rashish, in a nutshell, I think these are few, uh, you know, successes, which over the time I have been inculcating, uh, you know, I mean, of course, when I do it personally and through a few freelancers who work with me, and I think this is absolutely led to a lot of win-win and, and I'm sure you've seen that too. Yeah, I completely agree with you, Yash. I think, uh... Uh, it goes to say, you know, that when I look at the kind of closures that you have done uh, and, and the, the, the sheer value that it has generated for the organization, uh, you've really converted the challenges in the business into opportunities uh, such that it could actually become a learning for a lot of people. Uh, and, you know, I must also highlight that, uh, you know, we have this practice that every time we, we place a candidate, we ask them for a review. And these reviews come, you know, on our Google business page. Some of the reviews are so beautifully written for you. Uh, each one of them mentions about the kind of service you've provided to them, about how you've taken deeper interest uh, in, in their career and making them feel at home. Uh, it speaks volumes about, you know, what you've done uh, for them, you know, in their most important part of their life, which is their, uh, their career. And, you know, in this particular answer, and, you know, I think you've, you answered more than what I expected is you really spoke about the challenges, but more importantly, you spoke about the challenges in a way of how you can go around them and, and then make them, you know, into, uh, into good processes, into good systems, uh, such that they work for you. Because I think everybody, every single recruiter has that little bit of their own secret recipe of how to get things done. And I'm, I'm very grateful for you to, to share that with us. Um, you know, an interesting question, and, and this is something that, you know, you mentioned, uh, you, you spoke about relationships. And uh, I'm sure in, in several of my conversations, I've always brought up to people and all our franchise partners, how important are relationships in our business? Uh, I, want to, I want you to spend some time sharing with the audience today in terms of what do you do in order to strengthen your relationships and how has it actually benefited you? In your business okay so um so for me uh, uh you know one process that of course you have inculcated into us is uh, every tuesday uh you know call uh with your uh, set of clients uh, just to check if they are okay and you know considering uh the covid 19 that came into play so checking the well-being of uh, you know your clients uh if all was good in fact uh, you know, uh, I have written, uh, you know, if the person has not been able to answer the phone, I have actually written emails to clients saying that I hope you're doing well. And whenever you get time, let's, you know, have a quick chat about 
uh, you know what's happening and uh, if you need any help uh, uh, you know during this uh, situation of uh, whether it be employee or any other you know help as a humanity i mean i'm not saying that uh, you know as a humanity it is just to help you and uh, believe you me like there were a few clients who came back saying that you know our uh, ceo uh, full family is like under covid and uh, at a critical stage so you were a part of that discussion just trying to sympathize the 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 your point of contact and not like literally being in touch with your ceo but then that gesture somewhere you know i feel uh, you know does help you and again as we speak uh, the person one of the candidate joins tomorrow as we speak so that's been again a success for me and 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 there has been about about 2 3 months of gap that the client had stopped you know requirements for uh, you know uh, they were not hiring because of uh, you know this entire it situation in the market but that they now opening up and we are going to have more requirements and that's what i'm happy about and it's been with me for like almost year and a half this client so you know this is uh, you know relationships i i try to just uh, you know if not email i i check with my clients if they are comfortable uh, you know talking over whatsapp sometimes because you know they are idly busy so you know sometimes some things could be even asked uh, very uh, softly through whatsapp if that's their preferred medium of communication also so these are things which has really helped me develop uh, uh, you know uh, okay so another thing today so being diwali around the corner in fact today morning from one of my clients i have actually received a diwali gift saying that thank you yash you know for all your help and support throughout so i mean you know uh, it, it's just a it, it's just a different feeling altogether when you when you receive that kind of love from your clients and i think that's exactly what i would recommend all partners to that's the relation that you need to develop so you are sorted perfect i think that speaks uh, you know again like i said it speaks amazing things about you and the way you've taken ownership in the in the service that is being delivered now uh, you know yash obviously uh, there is a franchiser and a franchisee relationship between us uh, and you know we at talent corner are very focused on providing uh, high quality support to our franchise partners uh, what do you feel about it what's been your experience about the kind of support that has come from the head office um so i think uh, rashesh this 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 support starts uh, right from you uh, of being able to introduce somebody to talent corner of course all the briefing uh, the business understanding that you uh, you know give uh, what is the potential that you may Uh, be able to give, but of course these are numbers. So only once you get into it is where you realize that yes, what Rashid said is much more than you know what you could ideally land up doing. And uh, you know, and I remember you know I took about a day or two to just think about it and tell you that yes, you know Rashid, this is what I want to do. Plus the 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 uh, the SOPs that you have uh, you know created the uh, the way an email has to be going to a client once the client is allocated to you then. how we need to call how a cv format has to be gone uh, you know how do you send uh, the details of a candidate in a particular format it's like you know you you start with something which is already ready you don't have to put your brains over there you only need to focus on getting your uh, you know candidates rest everything like you have set up absolutely well uh, in fact you know uh, you know your your bd team and your uh, you know your your the managers who are assigned to us they are brilliant supports to us and in fact you know uh, sometimes uh, uh, you know i i feel that uh, you know when we do that uh, three monthly review uh, you know that you usually i would do with you know all of the partners that you have uh, that has also you know now i have realized that it is helping us because of course you put in targets to us and uh, for me any target is like has to be achieved so it's a little bit of a throttle to your own self i mean of course you have your own goals but there's somebody also overlooking and pushing you for attain like achieving your goals and i think that's that's like a brilliant and and coming personally from the owner himself uh, that 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 speaks volumes about the kind of you know uh, you know company that you hold and uh, with whatever efforts that you and your team have put to get talent corner into the top 100 uh, recruitment uh, agencies in india and i think that's one of our, like my boasting uh, powers to whenever i speak to a candidate and say we are the top 100 recruitment agencies and blah 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 you know so it, it's a thrill in itself uh, you know the kind of uh, support and uh, what comes from the uh, the head office of talent corner and you know yash uh, uh, 
today's day and age, there are so many opportunities and uh, people usually, when they're looking at opportunities, they're obviously scared. They're obviously vulnerable. Uh, they're obviously thinking that, you know, I'm going to invest money, but would I be getting my money back? Uh, you know, is there transparency in the structure? Uh, you know, I hope I'm not going to get cheated. And these are the usual questions that come across to everybody. What has been your experience? And this, I'm going to ask you very, very frankly, in terms of money matters, right? Uh, in terms of money matters, has the talent corner head office been absolutely transparent, crystal clear, you know, in the transactions about what we committed earlier to and what we are doing right now? Uh, so, uh, so for me, I think, uh, uh, of course, so you know, any investment that you do, first thing is to recover that, and then is where you benchmark yourself, right? So I think for me, uh, uh, you know, Talent Corner has been, uh, you know, completely transparent uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the kind of support firstly that you guys give uh, in terms of, so like I said, it's only for us in terms of identifying the clients, uh, uh, sorry, the candidate and doing a closure, everything else is taken care of by your office, right? And the best part was the first transaction that happened where, you know, you receive the money on like a Monday. And I see that money coming into my account on Tuesday and, and I like how more trustworthy or, a uh, you know, a trust or a transparency for that matter, where, you know, I know a lot of people who, who, you know, say that my client has not paid other businesses, not related to our business, but I'm just saying other businesses where it's been outstanding for like 30 days, 40 days and, you know, three months and stuff. So here the transparency, transparency speaks volumes about you making that immediate payment a very next day or the same day that you receive the account, uh, you know, the money. And, uh, you know, for anybody joining this business, uh, I think the willingness of doing business matters, rest will be history is an assurance, you know, and it, it is irrespective whether you come from the HR background or no, uh, the kind of trainings, uh, the kind of videos uh, that Talent Corner has, uh, you know, spent, invested, will just like make your processes seem completely seamless and you might not even feel like oh i just started this and you know been with me for like you know a couple of years kind of a thing so uh, you know uh, anybody wanting to do this business uh, just uh, if you have patience uh, and consistency uh, i think uh, you can absolutely sail through using talent corner I think what Yash has brilliantly mentioned are two things, patience and consistency. Uh, very often when I'm talking to uh, people who are interested in our franchise, I ask them three very simple questions. Are you, you know, interested in doing this business as a long-term business opportunity? And only if the answer to that is yes. And I'm sure, Yash, you agree with me that this can't be a short-term business opportunity. It needs to be a long-term business opportunity. Absolutely. Uh, no. Absolutely no. Because... Uh, I remember if I have to do maths of my first year uh, versus the second year, uh, I think you have seen this. It's a unbelievable difference and we've already set targets for the next year. So, uh, you know, it is, it is, like I said, just uh, <laughs> Correct. I think beautifully pointed out. So, yeah, so one needs to look at this as a long-term opportunity. One, you know, like Yash said, consistency, you need to invest your own personal time into this business to be actually able to get value out of it. Yes, you may build teams in the future, but you know, when you are not there, your teams are not going to work for you. Right? You need to be the leader in the forefront. You need to be the one who is actually driving the business and I'm sure it will bring uh, tremendous results. And lastly, uh, you know, nothing really gets built overnight. Uh, you know, Yash clearly said that first year you know, versus second year, the profits for him have been tremendously different. Uh, and I can tell you with a reasonable amount of surety that he's done really, really well. Touch wood, you know, he's done really, really well. And I and I really hope and it makes me very, very happy that I, that I see the numbers. So, uh, sorry that you to interrupt, but if you remember, I had told you at the time when I was taking this, that this is actually going to be a secondary business and not my primary business. I'm rather happy to now say that this has become my primary and the other business has become second. And I mean, it, it's, it's, it's absolutely result oriented and the time invested in this business, you know, so that, that, that's, that's exactly where, you know, we say long-term is, is a hundred percent win-win. Yeah, I agree with you. And, I, and I'm so glad that 
this has actually become your primary line of business uh, and the other one is you know that's taken the second seat uh, but it, it's so it's so i'm so happy to hear about this and it, and it the joy of actually a partner doing well uh, is is an immense joy for me uh, i keep telling my partners the time when i'm crediting money to you know to my partner's account i have a brilliant smile on my face because it's it's amazing you know when you actually know that something that you have you know thought you know would work when it works it's an amazing feeling to have so uh, yash i'm going to ask you my last question you know there are lots of people who are going to watch this video who are who are actually sitting on the fence or thinking should i become a franchise partner should i not become a franchise partner what are the couple of things you like to tell them so that they could make a decision yes or a no uh, in, in you know in terms of taking a decision forward so uh, so brashir i think we've we've kind of in uh, subsequent uh, things we've kind of covered this uh, again and again so like i said firstly uh, if uh, you have been thinking of doing some business for some time uh, with little investment i think this is a brilliant opportunity uh, believe you me uh, 6 months i think i'm even saying it a little on a higher side you will have recovered that money uh, but for that patience consistency is what you need to imbibe in yourself and not lose hope because uh, you know a couple of months would actually go into understanding the business if you are not from an hr background if you are then of course you know how it works and you can just sail through easily but if you are not given a little bit of extra in that couple of months and i i assure that in the 6 months or the 7th month you will achieve your break even and then balance 6 months in the first year is going to be your profit and over that after that your graph is going to change completely great great thank you yash for sharing this with us and and uh, thank you for spending this time and giving some real real nice tips sharing some amazing experiences uh, it was a real candid conversation and uh, i wanted to keep it that way so that people get a real picture about what to expect with talent corner because we want the right partners we we're not in a hurry to build uh, too many partners we definitely want the right partners so thank you for doing this with us and i hope and, and sorry get, again yes. once again i think i i think i forgot one more important element for a person who is wanting you know maybe if they have in mind what if i don't get good clients what if i don't believe me there are times that i have to tell my talent uh, t- uh, tell my team leader that i'm sorry i am full or uh, with my plate right now i can't take clients please do not give it to me these are words i have used and not once but like multiple times and uh, you know so so if you are you know coming with a frame of mind that i want to do business be prepared for good business <laughs> you know that's that's that's, that's, that's a very interesting point you know a, a lot of people when they come to me Uh, you know, ask coming for a franchise. Uh, they ask me, uh, "Will I get enough work?" And in my mind, I'm thinking, "Wait till you join us, because the amount of work that we're actually getting is far more higher than the number of franchise partners that we have." Absolutely, like you will be flooded uh, every week, is what I can say. Yeah, I think I think that's a beautiful thing about a business when you do great work. Uh, we get referred to more and more clients and. and naturally you know you want credibility and therefore more people want to work with you and i think the franchise model by itself you know having multiple owners in the business where everybody's working hard towards a common cause is what actually creates the the value for everybody as a whole um, so now, again this point uh, sorry again i'm interrupting there's so much to talk so there is one more uh, you know the relationships things that we spoke some time back the relationships have gone so far that the clients are so happy with our services and they have actually gone ahead and you know uh, asked some other colleagues of theirs in other organizations and have actually converted two businesses from there so wow. that's that's you know uh, the kind of uh, you know business that you are going to be in where uh, relationships uh, take the you know uh, completely uh, it's a relationship business uh, driven business business for sure yeah i think you really summarized this really well uh, once again yash a big big thank you to you for spending this time with us uh, yes, i'm sure this video whoever is going to watch it is going to create, you know get a lot of learning from it and more importantly i think they will understand uh, what to expect and what not to expect uh, from this business 
and there is nothing more important than transparency and clarity in business i think this video will really really help them to to understand that right thank you so much everybody for joining us and uh, wishing you all the very best looking forward to having you as our partner in the future thank you